So if it looks like we haven't changed shirts in a couple of days, um, it's because we recorded this after worship because um, Shannon had some family things to attend to and I had um, Zoom meetings to attend to and we shot it like right after Bibles or right after worship on Sunday. So no, we don't wear these shirts all the time. <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to say that so that way people be like, man, they don't ever take those shirts off. Like, no, like we shot this after worship because like that was going to be convenient for us. And so you're not getting a live one, but you're getting um, a fresh video this week. And so uh, we hope you enjoy this lesson this week. Thank you for joining us today for our pastor study. Um, I'm Pastor Matt. And I'm Pastor Shanna. Um, we're going to continue our study of United Methodist Questions, United Methodist Answers by F. Um, Belton Joyner. Um, we're going to look, we're going to skip a question because we felt like in that, the question number three, we talked about quite a bit. Um, and we're going to talk about um, question number four, why does God allow suffering? And so this is kind of an interesting topic to talk about with all that's going on in our world. Um, and so Shanna, like, as you think about that question, what comes up for you? Um, you know, I know that this is not a, it's not going to cover a blanket cover answer, but my first thought comes to mind is free will. Is that we have free will to, to, to make our choices of what we want and, and you know, and, and how we want to live. And so some of that suffering, a lot of that suffering sometimes is brought on by ourselves. And so, you know, and I know there's going to be pushback with that, and I'm sure you're already thinking about it. <laughs> what you're going to say. <laughs> but that is my first thought, is that we do have free will. And so some of that, you know, God, God, God allows us to, to have those choices of what suffering comes in. Uh, you know, some of that suffering. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's systemic suffering. I mean, I think there's, you know, systemic things that cause suffering. And then, you know, there are those, like, you know, natural things that cause us suffering you think of natural disasters and um you think of i mean even the pandemic is you know kind of a natural disaster in its own right absolutely um and that um and those things occur and then we have those things we do to ourselves um whether it's ourselves or we do it towards others or you know like that sort of thing um and that's always hard because then you know i've i know i mean i know i found myself in those places like you know why you know, we've all probably at some point or another have asked ourselves, why God? Why now? Why me? Why this? Um, especially like with the global pandemic, that seems to be like a, you know, like, why is this happening now? Or why is this happening to me? Um, and so we go to God in that. And so like, you know, for me, it's about, um, and I think it's Mr. Rogers that talks about look for the stretcher bearers. Mm -hmm. Look for the people that will, you know, the first aid responders, those people you know, those are the opportunities to see God. And I think even like in what's going on right now with the global pandemic, you know, I've been able to see and hear stories of people doing uh, great godly things that help alleviate suffering um, in a way that does provide light and, and hope. Because um, I think, I mean, suffering leads to hope or hope leads to suffering. I mean, I, I think that those two words kind of work together. Right, right. Um, and so like that question of, you know, why does God allow suffering? Is it like, is it, it's a part of creation. Um, and not necessarily the natural design that God had envisioned in Genesis 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. But it's the response of what happened in Genesis 3 um, for man not living in the right covenant with God. Mm -hmm. And then it's not like that suffering is caused by something you did now, there are cases where that's the case. Mm -hmm. Like, if I were to walk over right now and slap you, you would be suffering. And I, I in my mind, you know, sinned, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, But I don't think that, that that causality of, like, giving or whatever, and, like, how some people will make that connection that, well, you didn't do this, so that's why God is, hates you. Or, you know, like, um, I don't think that that's really the way that God... I don't either. Um, and, and so, like, that that's, like, the thing I want... As a, like that, this idea of suffering is one of the things we have to look and see what it is, and and really discern. Because sometimes we think one thing is one thing, but it's really ourselves, or it's something else, and it's being aware of that something else and being a part of that. And so, you know, so as you unpack that, what what are some other things that kind of what come to mind? And of course, I'm teaching in Sunday school about faith, and so. But as you were talking to me, it came to my come to my mind thinking about where faith lies in this. And, you know, with suffering, 
um, I believe that I've seen witness to a lot of people who have had suffering from physical illness to mental illness to being homeless to you know financial situations that those that hang on to that faith and hold that faith create this hope that carries them through a little bit better and God carries them through a little, a, a little bit stronger seems to be with having that faith to to sustain them to get through this rough time this this rough patch this rough time and and in the midst of all of it there is some good good happening between it you know there is some good good things happening between it that that um, because of their faith they're holding on to it was there anything out of the reading this week that that spoke to you in a sense of you know like anything that the author kind of shared or maybe enlightened something to you uh, this week in regards to the question um, I thought that when he talked about Adam and Eve and uh, that immediately after Adam and Eve um, sin against God they also become separated from each other and begin to hide from each other behind fig leaves but because don't we, and I thought, well, when we're suffering, there's a, there's a sense there if we can hold on to each other and we're not separated from each other, that community of faith as well, that we can hold on to that, that makes us stronger too. Because, I mean, um, I hate the term misery loves company because <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about here. But during this pandemic, I have thought, that we have done quite well with our care team and with what, who we're reaching out with for those that are hurting or suffering, those that are reaching out with us and talking to us and leading us and saying, hey, so-and-so is going to the hospital or so-and-so is sick. Um, you know, so many rallied around last week, Lou Scarsdale, Bob and Lou Scarsdale. Did they go to their house and take them food? Absolutely not. But the phone calls, the text messages, the calls, the prayers, the emails, that is where, you know, that they were there to carry them through that time of suffering. And Adam and Eve being separated and, 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 and doing this, they didn't have each other to, to pull through with this, with this suffering that they were going through. Well, and that's where I like the line that he says. Um, he says that the good news in this is that God doesn't leave us alone in our suffering, but enters fully with us into our times of suffering. Mm. and that God is there. Like, I mean, I said it on Sunday for the sermon, you know, like God is with us in the midst of this, even as we're trying to process forgiveness, that God's not going to give up on you, whether you forgive or you don't forgive, and God's going to be there, but God wants you to forgive. Absolutely. Um, and work towards, you know, in some cases, work towards reconciliation. And in a lot of cases, some cases, reconciliation may never happen. That's right. But like, in those times of suffering, you know, God understands because, through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that, like, all that's going on, you know, I, I, um, I think of the, the scripture, Romans 8, 18, um, you know, um, through 23, and it reads like this. Um, I believe that the present suffering is nothing compared to the coming glory that is being revealed to us. The whole creation waits breathless with anticipation for the revelation of God's sons and daughters. Creation was subject to frustration, but by its own accord, it was by choice of one of the one who subject it, but in the hope that in the creation itself will be set free from slavery to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of God's children. We know that the whole creation is groaning together and suffering labor pains up until now. And it's not only the creation, we ourselves, who have the Spirit as the first crop of the harvest, also grown inside as we wait to be adopted and our bodies be set free. And then I like this next sentence. We were saved in hope. If we see what we hope for that isn't hope who hopes for what sorry if we see what we hope for that isn't hope who hopes for what they already see mm -hmm. but if we hope for what we see don't see 
We wait for it with patience. And it's and isn't that about faith? Yeah, I mean, and sometimes it is. Sitter, like I always think of Job. Yeah. Like when I think of suffering and and scripture, I always I always fall back on Job. Like it's kind of my, I know it's an easy fallback. Like to me, that's like an easy like that's an easy fallback. It's the Sunday school answer in essence. But one of the things we learn about Job is how with through our faith can we persevere through all the things that Job goes through. And how can we utilize that as an example yeah. to remain faithful to God, mm-hmm. but then also remain faithful to our faith in God. And we're not just doing it to do it. That we're That's doing right. it to um, fully engage in um, life. Yeah. And that you're not like... One thing that I was told, and it, you know, Shannon, you grew up, you grew up a Methodist, like you grew up cradled in this. And so like your experience and mine are totally different, but I was always like, like, like one, one thing that always like frustrated me with, with the church was like people saying that your suffering was caused because of something you did. Yeah. Like I never bought into that. Still don't buy into that. I don't either. Um, only when it's systemic or you cause the sin, do I really like, yeah, that's, yeah, you're suffering because you were doing, like, that was your part. Like, I'll acknowledge that, but there are some times when suffering occurs that is just part of life and how we answer the call to it that. It just happens. Yeah, how we answer the call to that is really what matters. How we respond to that. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that was one thing. The other thing, too, is, like, I always struggled with, like, this concept of just, like, like we are also called to be with people in the midst of their suffering. And I can't tell you enough how many times I've seen in churches where when people are suffering, they just, they don't, it's like they've got some like crazy disease that they can't be around. Um, when we need to be with them and, you know, encouraging them. And I, you know, you, you use Lou and, um, and, that, and that's a good example of how the church was like and how people were, um, and I think of how people, you know, like even in my quarantine, you know, I had a few phone calls too, and that makes a day. Like, I don't think people realize how much it just makes a huge th- that difference. little thing makes a world of difference. It does. Um, and I think it, I believe it's something we all are called to do because of our baptism. Mm-hmm. And it's not just something that's reserved to select people mm-hmm. who hold places in leadership in the church. I think by our baptism, we are call, all called to be in the middle of suffering with people, whether it's a systemic issue, like let's use racism or let's use, I mean, we could go down a laundry list of things where we could be present with people and letting them know it's going to be okay and we're going to get through this together and that God's going to bring us through. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I wish like we could lean into that a little bit more and the idea of hope, like I love hope. Um, uh, I think, I think if we lean into that hope of, I mean, I think that that's how we persevere through. I agree. And that leads us to that, that question, like that last question there. Um, how is God present with us during our times of suffering? Oh. You know, um, we've had some difficult times. My family has had some difficult times the last couple of weeks. Um, my mom moving in with us and and just change in, in how our daily lives are, are living and how where we go and what we do. And God has carried us through this. I truly believe that it is our faith and our hope knowing that we are doing the right thing and we are taking care of mom and that we are coming together as a family. We really have pulled together, but God is being still at the center of it. And I thought it was beautiful last Sunday, I come home from communion and um, mom was um, sitting on the edge of the bed and I walked in and she's, and uh, I walked in and, and she's sitting on the edge of the bed and I look up at her and I smile and she said, I'm ready. Mm. And I thought that was so um, beautiful that she remembered where I was and she knew that she was ready for to, for her to be received, for her to receive her communion because she believes in being forgiven and, and the grace of God. And so, um, yeah, to hold on to that, I, I don't know how people do it that don't have that faith. Yeah. Well, and I think that that's where, like, the one thing that, the one thing that kind of bugs me a little bit is when people try to do faith by themselves. Mm -hmm. Because I really do believe that faith is a communal thing Mm -hmm. and that we're in this together. Um, And that there are ways, like, even now, like, with this technology, like, there are ways that we can be engaged. 
uh, we have to we have to just be willing to step out and engage those ways. And yes, it does look a little bit different. But I guarantee you that everybody watching today has somebody dealing with something that they could easily just give I them a phone call. It. Absolutely. Um, that they could just check in on them or they could, I mean, you know, the sky's the limit on that. Um, but to do it in a safe and healthy way because, we, I mean, that's, we definitely want to practice wearing a mask, washing hands, mm -hmm. and, and safe distancing because, like, you know, that's how we care for one another. That's right. And we don't cause anybody else to, to suffer. That's right. Because we don't want to cause, we we want to be in a place where we don't cause anybody to suffer. Like, that's mm -hmm. that do no harm thing. Like, that do good, do no harm thing. That's why that's really important. It's really important to me, too, um, as, as a pastor to try as a church not to do any harm as mm -hmm. best as we can. I mean, and that's, I mean, I, I say that a lot. Right. Um, and I hold that accountable because I, I, I'm very familiar with church history and I can tell you the church hasn't been great right. at, at taking care of people um, right. in a lot of ways. There have been a lot of ways, too, that they've done the, I mean, they've done phenomenal work. Mm -hmm. But we could always do better. And that's the, the push is we should always do better. Um, and so, like, having that group of people around us and, like, there are ways that that can happen without um, the ways that we're used to and, and just being open to those possibilities. Um, and I think, you know, for suffering, you know, it is looking for those stretcher barriers. You know, you think of it when a disaster hits, you know, those people that are first there Absolutely. and last to leave. Um, you know, it, the hard part is, like, so I'll use this as a good case. Most of you know what United Methodist uh, Committee on Relief, UMCOR. So UMCOR had just finished up their last case in Houston when Laura hit. And so now they're back now at, they're back back at doing those things again. And, and it was the same thing before that, before Harvey they were just finishing up their cases from the previous storm, and then Harvey hit, and so it's like this continual right. thing. Because they don't leave, right? When the, when the, when the mass majority of it is done, they don't leave. They yeah. stay until. Yeah. And, and I have to be honest with you, as someone who has been worked with natural disasters, um, I've always appreciated. I appreciated the the very first one I ever worked, but it was all said and done. The last several cases that were in our area, the only people who were still there were the Methodist and yeah. UMCOR. Yeah. Um, every, everybody else before. everybody else had scattered to other things but we were there making sure that people were still being taken care of and we got those last few cases done and and, and that was just a great thing and I've seen that ever since that time and that has been 10 years that I've seen that in action usually the the uh, one of the first in and one of the last to leave um, and that's one of the things I love about our connection is that we help support that in a lot of different ways um and so, like, I, I think I want to wrap this up with a, with this question is, um, how are you, uh, if you're suffering, whom are you surrounding yourself with to help you through the suffering? If you're not suffering, whom are you being the light for? And if you need help with that, let us know. We'd be glad to connect you because we have a lot of people that could definitely use uh, your prayers and your support. I can't thank you enough. Um, everything we've got going on is listed in our Connect, Serve, and Grow on our website. You can uh, tune into that. Um, you know, we're thankful for you for joining in today. And um, just let us know that you were here by commenting that you were here. And um, we hope you have a good day. But I'm going to ask Shannon to close us out in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you. Thank you for the times that that suffering has come upon us, or if we're in the midst of it right now, we claim, God, you there carrying us through. Thank you, God, for your presence amongst us. Thank you, God, for your healing love to abound upon us. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just remember this, that God loves you, and so do, and so we. do we. Have a good week. Bye, everybody.